Coming up in part one of our trip, we show you how to camp for a week in the wilderness without any water. We stare at our reflections. I wear a hat. Rob listens to his reel, and I impart some words of wisdom. The good news is, the eggs are still rattling. It means they're not all broken. So thanks for watching and follow along our September 2021 trip to the Boundary Waters. Our adventure starts weeks before in Omaha, Nebraska, with Heat That Solvers, where Rob is designing or planning our. Uh, I'll just let Rob's arm tell us. Hey, everybody, today I'm here in Omaha, Nebraska, and I am with Heath, who is with uh, Solvers. He does welding and fabrication. Um, today we're working on putting a canoe rack together on the 2020 Dodge Grand Caravan uh, so that we're taking our uh, trip from Omaha up to the boundary waters. Uh, we don't necessarily have to rely on the roof rack that comes with the vehicle and it gives a little more stability and a little more control. So we're just going to talk about the design and uh, try to brainstorm the best way to come up with this. And then as far as options on that, that extension... Well, with that sorted out system, and giving Rob a few pointers on how to frame video shots, it was time to get packing. Alright, so here it is, a little after 1 o'clock in the morning. We have been prepping and packing and getting things ready to go. And it just seems to be kind of one thing after another. We're trying to get out of here at five o'clock in the morning. We still don't have the van back from the <laughs> fabricator. Or any bags back. Yeah, or any bags back. As you can see, they're still hanging on the wall. Uh, this trip is going to be uh, Ben and I and uh, four of our friends. You guys will get a chance to meet them uh, here shortly. But uh, as of right now, we just wanted to uh, check in with you. And we're gonna get back to trying to get packed up and ready to go before it's uh, sunlight. As you can see, packing takes a lot of time when you have to plan out a week's worth of food, clothes, camping supplies, fishing gear, and video equipment. We'd go through everyone's gear later and pack it appropriately once we got the Ely, but for now we just needed to load up the van and get going. We hit the road and made one important stop along the way. So we just got uh, done getting the leeches over at Bados here in uh, north side of Minneapolis. Uh, temperatures up north uh, aren't producing leeches, so we're going to take these up with us. There are a small, but fish will still eat them. We arrived in the quaint town of Ely, Minnesota before sundown and drove to Canoe Country Outfitters where we had rented a house so we had enough room to lay out all of our gear. We stopped in at the Outfitters and heard there were supposed to be storms heading our direction around when we were planning on paddling in. We were able to get new permits so we could go in a day earlier, which would hopefully allow us to have camp set up before the rain came. However, going in early also meant that rather than having an entire day to prepare for new guys for the trip, we only had about three hours. For the start of day one, we woke up early so we could be at the Outfitters when they opened, with the hope of beating the incoming weather. They helped get everyone fitted with paddles and safety gear, and we loaded everything up and made the last pit stop at our favorite tackle shop. We've had success before with leeches, but with the change in water temperature later in the season, we also got minnows in case the fish were picky. The guys there gave us the latest fishing report and told us to start with the minnows on either an eighth or quarter ounce bright jig head. Keep in mind, minnows add a lot of weight and bulk to carry in, so plan ahead with an extra pack if you want to bring them. The weather front that was bringing the storm seemed to have already arrived. The wind was howling and looking to make our paddle very interesting. 
It didn't sound like the wind was going as slow until after the storms rolled through, so we figured better now than later. And why does it always seem that no matter where you go or what direction you turn, it's always a headwind? Like how a whitewater kayaker picks a line down a set of rapids, we tried to read the water and pick a route that would give us the most cover and the fewest crosswind situations. Rob and I were genuinely concerned with our friends paddling in these conditions. If a canoe started taking on water or tipped over, we may never see our gear again. To ensure this didn't happen, we took a couple short breaks to recharge and see how everyone was holding up. It really was a grueling paddle and at times you could see the why are we doing this again look on people's faces, but they proved that while they may not take the most direct path between two points, there was no reason for us to worry about our gear. Not only were these guys getting it and starting to come together, they were actually having fun. Sometimes our world it seems so busy, we can't see the shining sun. We step outside to see the light The morning air, our journey's just begun It feels so right, let's stay the night A simple sky in stillness, the million stars above Even though we're living, we just can't get enough Memories, we'll build them, tell me what you think Still untold, things left undone yeah. It's never easy, and that's okay Cause Portage mules, they always go away Alright you guys, so this is our first Portage Everybody's made one trip over I'm pretty sure the newbies are dying right now But we're gonna see if they can make it for the next Portage Which is in about 10 minutes from now So, we are just leaving Lake 1 gonna jump into lake two not making good time look at my watch don't even have one but uh we'll see if uh brian dave brad and uh here they come right now don't want to know that i'm talking about them. but anyway talk to you soon taking a breather a simple sky and stillness the million stars So we just finished first portage of the day, a whopping 29 yards, or rods, and uh, feels good. Uh, I think these guys here. So we got Farley over here and Farley over here. That's Team Zigzag. Then we got Dave and Dustin, and that's uh, Crash Course. Memories, we are built up. Tell me what you're thinking of Even though we're living, we just can't get enough And this road behind us seems so clear If the light goes, we could watch the morning sun But remember these moments falling disappear When we leave this place, the memories have just begun A simple sky in stillness the million stars above Even though we're living We just can't get enough Memories we'll build up Tell me what you're thinking of Even though we're living We just can't get enough Hey you guys, it is uh, just before midnight Day one night We came in one day early Because there was supposed to be some pretty bad weather Not even sure if you can hear us right now the winds are just really kicking up and uh, some bad weather is going to be coming in. Um, we've just been notified that there's potentially 70 mile an hour winds. Half hail. Dollar size. Yeah, <laughs> hail. Um, oh, uh, cloud to ground lightning. Um, it's Once. a uh, 
yeah, floods. So it's a uh, particularly dangerous situation potentially. We've tried to batten down the hatches here, uh, lowered some things so that hopefully the winds will go over them and not tear them apart. But I guess at this point, uh, we just wanted to check in before we ended the night and hunker down in the tents. See and, what it looks like in the morning. Yeah, we'll <laughs> let you know if we made it through or not. All right, day two here at Lake Three. While we were expecting to wake up on Gilligan's Island, we, uh, we woke up to a pretty decent sunrise. We were hearing from every major weather station that we were going to be expecting severe thunderstorm and hail, and here we are. Getting ready to start fishing. And the best news is, we already caught the first keeper smallie. So, let me show you a few of the things we did around the campsite that uh, ended up not needing to do. We collapsed the tarps, brought our canoes all the way back into the woods and flipped them over. Strung most of our miscellaneous gear together, so if it went, it all went. We used our anchors, which are basketball hoops, to secure our minnows, wrap them up, put some rocks in them, toss them out in the lake about 15 feet. Most of them survived and might have saved the trip. So right now, uh, those guys are out on the point since we're landlocked here for a while, uh, just kind of hanging out. So we want to show you guys the new boat. Uh, it is a North Star Northwind 20. It's actually a four person canoe that uh, has two removable seats. Obviously we're taking those out so we can carry all the gear and things like that. But just kind of wanted to introduce you to it. Um, we're also going to get into some of the little modifications that we've made to it so that we can uh, have our fishing poles and our fish finder uh, attached to it. It's Kevlar, it's lightweight, one person can pick it up, portage with it, uh, makes for a great boat. As you heard Ben say earlier, we were supposed to have this big storm last night. We're supposed to still get a storm yet today. As you can see, the water is pretty, uh, pretty choppy. We're not going to be able to get out in a canoe to do anything uh, productive fishing-wise. So we're stuck here on shore for a little bit, hoping that the winds die down, that we can get out there and uh, get some walleyes. With more storms on the horizon, we took a break from fishing to complete some crucial tasks around camp to prepare for the incoming weather. Well, most of us, anyways. And then the rain came back, interrupting Rob's nap and forcing us all back under the tarps. All right, started day three today. Yesterday was pretty much a washout. Got the fish early in the morning and a couple smallies, that was about it, some northerns. And the rest of the day was spent under the tarp, all around, waiting for the thunderstorms to move through. Today I woke up, giant fireball in the sky. It is not coming towards us. Yeah, thank goodness. Not today anyway. That would be the next thing on the list. Yep. But uh, you did write a list, walleye today. Walleye. Uh, cook walleye. Yep. And then eat walleye. Yeah. So, this is kind of That's the start what, of the trip. Yeah. The unofficial start, day three. Yeah, day three, start of the trip. Bacon, eggs, pancakes, steak, mint chocolate chips in your pancakes if you like those. And we found out our tent floats. Oh. Oh. So, can somebody tell me why they don't make a tent with a bottom on it that doesn't let water in? But yet they'll sell us a tent all day where when water gets in, it'll never go out. If you know something, let us know. So a little something I guess I'll share with you guys, a little, little secret uh, or a little tip that will give you a pro tip, I guess. 
So we bring a uh, silky saw along and these 15 inch uh, loppers. I like these because a lot of this, this wood that floats around on the sides and stuff, you can just pick it up and you can cut it down to the size you want. And it's a lot easier than sawing it. So next time you go out, give it a try, pick yourself up a, a lopper. been an adventure um, not what I pictured or imagined but we had uh, we had very good weather day one day two rain lots of rain and now it's a little chilly and um, the lake is calm so this is this is exciting this is the stillness that I was expecting uh, in my head coming out here and just seeing it calm and still and uh, little chilly that's all right so very excited about today we have to work for our food which um, which is exciting and, and we're constantly working you know it's um, done a lot of camping trips but you know it's constant work getting getting wood and preparing the next meal um, and it starts right away so I, I enjoy that though very excited hey so today I wanted to kind of show you a little bit about uh, what we do as far as accessorizing our canoe um, I built a uh, African teak thwart uh, so that we could mount some of the gear that we use. Um, I also put on a uh, tape measure so that as we catch fish we can measure and make sure that we're uh, compliant with the rules and regulations. We're using the Garmin Striker 4. Uh, we're powering it with the Nakwa um, self-contained battery. We seem to get about 30 hours of runtime off of this battery in one charge. Um, so I just wanted to kind of show you today how we are going to set up this new thwart system that we have employed. And uh, some of the accessories here I've kind of modified, but this is a Scotty uh, transducer arm that I picked up so I also had this bag uh, picked it up off of Amazon but then I took it down to my local tailor and asked him to sew a couple of straps on it so that I could attach it to the thwart once it was ready to go so you'll be able to see that I've got the power and the uh, batteries and all that stuff kind of self-contained. What I like to do is just hang it from the thwart. Just kind of like this here. And then that way everything stays self-contained. I don't have wires all over the place. And all I have to do then is just connect my wires in the back. Go ahead and just test it real quick. So we've got power and we're set up here. Next thing is just getting the transducer put on. And that's pretty easy as long as you don't lose the parts. When we're paddling we like to keep it up like this just in case we run into rocks. Real simple though. Just lower it down to the side and retighten this here and you're good to go you're ready to start fishing with it being on this ram mount you can you can move it closer to you you can adjust it this in this fashion so that way when you're sitting here in your seat you've got everything right at your fingertips uh, a couple other things you see I put my rod holder on here um, I do have another camera mount that I can put up here um, which I haven't accessorized yet, but I do have is a cup holder for my drink. Okay. 
catch fish like this. Don't put lead in your mouth, kids. So today we're using slip bobbers and minnows. At least we're trying to use slip bobbers and minnows. Can't seem to get in the water quite yet. We are officially in the water. After two days of sitting under the tarps, we couldn't wait to get out in the canoes. We really wanted to get some fishing on film, so I would pump Rob up with words of encouragement and positive affirmations. Great cast. Thanks. I like to catch fish. It's been slow going. So Ben has just hooked up on his first fish of the day. Alright, we got we got the first first walleye of the day. Just reeled it in. Uh, we all think. Saying there's walleye in here. That minnow just saw its life flash before its eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Desperately needing to stretch our legs and get a fire going for dinner, we headed back to camp and fished from the shore with the last remaining light. Here in the Boundary Waters, walleye fishing is the preferred method and fish, but I want to know why the eyelet at the end of my pole is so small that I can't get the bobber stop to go through it. So this is a walleye pole made for this, and let's see what happens when I cast it out there. Success. What'd you use? Bait. Minnow? Uh, bleach. With the first three days in the books, and Rob now knowing how to use his walleye pole, we're all looking forward to the second half of our trip. Coming up in part two of our trip, we play charades, hone in on our video skills, catch some keeper fish and release them, and even make some new friends. So please like this video and subscribe to our channel and check out PortageMule.com for updates and merchandise.